We finally ended it after being together for 10 years. We started dating when we were 19 and got married at 24. I always thought we'd be together forever. We had so many great experiences in life and traveled a lot. We don't have any kids, so that way she could focus on her school and get her bachelor's, master's, and now doctorate. Last November, I found out she was having an affair. They never used protection, and she did things with him she'd never do with me. She was acting strange and always wanting to go out on a drive. Never questioned it because she had to stay home all day due to COVID. The affair had been going on for three months. Literally right after we just bought our first house. She was starting to fall in love with him. He was 11 years older, with kids and married. I should note, they're both in the mental health field, him being a psychiatrist. After talking with her in marriage counseling, I decided to learn to forgive and make it work. I still really loved her and wanted to be with her. As time went on though, she was starting to become more distant with affection, communication, etc. Until the point that about a month ago, she wanted to stop kissing and wearing her wedding ring. I was living in purgatory, stuck. It hurt so much, but I thought that's what she needed to heal. I should mention that she states she was in pain for years before the affair because of how I was to her. Looking back, there were a lot of times I was very disrespectful and heartless. She was working full time, going to school full time and doing internships. Yet, I still expected her to make dinner even though I could have easily done it. I used her as my only support for depression. I told her I wanted to die several times. When COVID started, she had to be in the office and I would be on the other side of the office getting drunk and playing video games loudly and other instances. But I still bought her flowers, went on adventures, gave her massages, showed tons of affection. I know I wasn't perfect, but I still thought I showed her love and support. Right before the affair, we were arguing a lot and I recommended therapy. Her being a counselor refused. Now knowing it was because of pride. Two weeks ago, she said she didn't want to be with me anymore and said she wasn't in love with me and that too much damage had been done. I was in pain from how she was towards me that I was devastated but ultimately agreed. After a couple days, she wasn't sure if she made the wrong decision. I was so hurt by lack of affection and her being distant that I told her it didn't matter, I was leaving. Friday, she said she finally told her family we were splitting up, saying it made it official. I realized that I screwed up. I was trying to be strong, doing what people said would be the best thing to do, but I realized how much I love her and want to be with her. But she's already checked out. My best friend for 10 years. I'm in a city that I moved to so she could be with her family. Mine is two hours away in the middle of farmland. I'm here all alone. I made the mistake of her being my only support. I only had her and her family who I was close to. They won't talk to me. I don't have any friends in the area, just co-workers who I've been trying to reach out to. I don't know what to do. I feel so alone. Haven't been alone since high school. These last three months have been the most painful thing I've ever experienced. I'm constantly crying, puking. I can't turn off my thoughts. The affair still screws with me. So many triggers of things that remind me of her, I can't escape. Started seeing a therapist and it's somewhat helping. So I've been looking for apartments to move out of. The house is too painful and I can't afford the mortgage. But the realization that I'll be alone in the apartment freaking scares me. All right, time for some support community. Let's see what you got. Pray for me kicks us off. I'm so sorry to hear all that you're going through right now. I know how soul crushing it can feel to give the relationship your full effort when the other spouse is actively trying to sabotage it. The sense I get from reading your post is that you may be in a tough spot financially, so I would urge you to move quickly and decisively to file against her. I know it may go against her instincts which tell you that maybe you can salvage things, but you have to make sure that you get yourself in a secure spot financially. You won't be able to properly process this until you do. Schedule a consultation with a lawyer as soon as you can, tomorrow if possible, and whatever you do, don't leave the house even for a night in a hotel, because you give up a lot of ground if you do. The lawyer can tell you for sure, but it sounds like you supported her through her education process. You should ask for that time and money to be paid back to you. She took your support, put you in a difficult spot, and then cheated on you. Make sure that you get compensated for that. And hang in there. I know things seem bleak, but the legal stuff is the first step on a road to recovery and finding someone who treats you like you deserve to be treated. The OP's response? Thank you for your post. I think I've decided on going for a dissolution. She hasn't fought me on anything. I just decided to split finances down the middle. Even though she was in school, she still made more than me. 
I have the debt on my credit card, and she has her card and 100 k in student loans, so I won't have to worry about that. I haven't left the house, and I'm staying in the guest bedroom, which I've been in for about a month now. Alright, moving on. How long have you stayed with your cheating partner after you found out? What an odd question. I'm getting to the point, I don't love her how I should be anymore. 10 years together, almost 11. She cheated on me with a bloke from the bar she worked at two years into our relationship. They had sex twice. I knew about it. We worked it out as best we could, and eventually it was pretty harmonious. We had one child, then another. They're seven and three now. Two years ago, I found out she was messaging some bloke at her new job. Quite a lot. X is at the end of every message. When you know something's up and you can spot these little things. She denies still to this day, nothing happened and they were just friends. Back and forth deleting him off social. Months goes by and he's back on a different platform, hiding things, lying to me about messaging him or whatever it was to do with him. This went on for over a year. I'm a wreck at the end of it. Paranoid mess. Depressed and became an insomniac. Eventually, I plucked the courage up and left her. Went out and rented a room and ended it there and then. I lasted one night. I got so drunk and hated myself all night, crying, wondering what I've done to deserve all of the feelings I'm feeling. I came back home and reconciled as best we could. She said she was sorry and same old garbage. I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. You mean everything to me. I tried. I really, really tried to make things different. I found out a month later, she was already sexting a new bloke the night I left. She said it's because I left her and she was lonely. Normal service resumes. Delete the blokes off social media. Pinky promise, I won't do it again. This was a year ago, to this day nearly. Nothing since, and she has been very nice and trying, etc. All I can say is, I feel like a vessel, not a person. The only joy I have is my children. I don't love her the way I should. I love her in the sense that I would do anything for her to keep her safe and I wouldn't see her hurt, you know what I mean? She's the mother to my kids after all. I know I need to leave her, but I'm such a coward to do so. Didn't have the greatest upbringing, my nearest family is miles and miles away. We live together along with our children and her mother and father. I feel trapped almost. Anything bad happens between us, I'm singled out. I know what I need to do and I've planned it, but I can't seem to just do it. I think I would hurt her leaving. I know it would hurt my kids. Has anyone else just suffered in silence so they don't hurt anyone or their kids? Am I being selfish and not putting my kids first? Community probably has a field day with this one. Fushaman starts us off. You're worried about hurting her, but think, if you were about to walk into the path of danger, the path of a car, say, and someone roughly pulled you out of the way, would that not be better? Your missus is on a slippery slope to treating people badly and allowing herself to be the worst version of herself. Even if this does hurt her, it will be more beneficial for her in the long run. It's a hard, painful lesson in self-reflection. She needs to look at the worst parts of herself and learn how to deal with it. But a few of us do that willingly, and if she's not careful, she's going to hurt herself, her kids, and others in the future. I know, because both my parents have acted like that. Both have used it as a weapon and I was stuck with a fidelity fixation long before I got cheated on. In answer to your question, it's been just over four months for me and my wayward spouse. It's rough. Every day hurts. Do what you can to look after yourself, dude. I wish you all the best. Next up, nice rat 123 Sorry, but this was hard to read. I mean, you're actively being a doormat so you don't rock the boat. And when she rocks the boat, you're there trying to keep it from flipping over. OP, you should get out of the house for like a week. Find some place that you can actually stay in and just be free for a minute. You guys aren't reconciling and you're doing all this work while she disrespects you because you're trapped. I feel bad for your children seeing this dynamic and thinking it's normal or what they should emulate when they get older. Sorry, OP. Just a crappy situation. Boo Boo Kitty Foo 99 thinks, Do you want your kids to mirror your marriage? How are they going to think or see different if your marriage is all they know? Just because you're biting your tongue and holding back doesn't mean they don't notice. It will hurt at first, and family therapy is recommended especially for the kids, but if reconciliation isn't what you want and you're not happy, you need to move forward and show your kids what life is and how it can be better. If your kids were in your position, would you want them to stay and suffer in silence, or would you want them to grow and find happiness? 
And our last comment from LuluB916. I feel for you. Some days I feel like I am trapped in this marriage because I want my children and family to be happy, at the expense of my sanity. I love my wife, but I know I could love her so much more. I catch myself refraining from kissing her, touching her, saying nice things to her because she doesn't deserve it. It feels so unfair for me that my wife cheated on me and we should just move on like nothing happened and it was just a mistake. I've always been a person of high sense of justice and it kills me inside that my wayward spouse did me so wrong without any repercussion. Yes, she feels guilt, is ashamed of her actions and hate, the fact that I am miserable, but she doesn't feel the trauma I feel. She didn't go through the depression like I did. She could still eat and sleep during this dark moment in my life. I truly believe the only way serial cheaters really change is to lose what they have in order to rediscover who they are. They need to lose their sense of entitlement. Best way to put up with our current situation is to pat ourselves on the back every day that we are the better person. Every time I have a bad day full of triggers, I look at my two daughters and they remind me how much I mean to them. We might feel like doormats, but at the end, it would all be worth it. At times, I debated if I made the right decision to work on my marriage instead of just blowing everything up and getting a divorce. But then, I look back, and then I realize I would go through this pain again just to not see my children and wayward spouse suffer. Thanks for tuning in to the Sire. If you enjoyed today's content, smash that like button. Subscribe for more unique insights. Catch you in the next one.